Oh shit! Hang on, again. Okay. What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 73! Oh, where's Mel Morning? Oh! Calm down people, we're just taking a short little break with the Mel Morning and I figured getting back to Sunday with Ola a little bit hastier and you know, maybe switch it up a little bit, huh? We're just gonna see how it goes We have a bunch of shit on our play here at the office So we figured let's just make another Sunday with Ola And uh, we'll see when Mel Morning comes out You know, gives a little bit more time to prepare the Mel Mornings And keep the Sunday with Ola a little bit more current So nice to see you, have you had a great week? Alright, the dog... The dog is sitting on the cable So I'll just do it like this Like that Let's just talk about this guitar for a little second, okay? I just want to quickly show this new V1.6 Cannibalism of Green, hello! Insane, every tune, stainless steel frets, luminelay, side dots, you know what? You know, Duncan Solar pickups Sick You know, other than the guitar, I'm not gonna plug that much today, man Not that much, at least Trigger Life Cup from allinglishshop.com, hello I don't know if you saw, last week I did my first live stream on my second channel If you weren't aware about the fact that you can participate in the Sunday with Ola Riff Challenge You can download the drums from the entry you heard in the description and You can make your own riffs, upload it to YouTube and I might check you out in the upcoming uh, Sunday with Ola Contenders live stream on my second channel And there's gonna be another one tomorrow where I check out the last week's contributions, okay? So be sure to tag your video with Swola and the number Good to go, okay? I had a live stream last week and it was absolutely incredible I got to listen to more contributions than ever It was a lot of fun, you guys Very engaging, very awesome And there's also gonna be a live stream tomorrow So go check that out on the second channel, thank you Let's head over to the news Alright, let's start off by announcing that Arch Enemy has announced L See? I'm announcing that Arch Enemy are announcing a new album that's coming in July The new album is set to be released the 29th of July and it, the album will contain some of the singles you already heard like Deceiver Deceiver and House of Mirrors with a third single called Handshake with Hell And I wanna uh, address this a little bit We're seeing a release date for this album in July 29th and I mean, nothing weird about that but we saw the first single dropping last year sometime like mid... Uh, what, like November, October and, you know, that's almost like a full year before the album is released I think it's because nowadays the vinyl printing is f***ing out of hand <laughs> Delivery times for vinyl uh, albums is just... it's just insanely long Because obviously the demand for vinyls ha has gone through the roof with COVID and, you know, this, these past years basically more and more people want to have vinyls And I'm experiencing this as well right now because I ordered like feared album vinyls back in May last year and I'm not getting them until end February this year almost a full f***ing year to <laughs> print vinyls and ship them it's insane right now so I think that that's why you know they're, they're you know preparing themselves for uh, a release that late because they, they need the time man there's so many, uh, uh, you know, there's there's not too many vinyl plants and there's so many bands that want to have vinyls So, uh, maybe, the, just saying 
this might be why we're seeing a uh, release date so late. Just saying, I'm looking forward to the album. Or you can be like Meshuggah and release a banger of a song and announce that their album is getting released April 1st. Have you listened to the new single? It's heavy as okay? The single is called The Abysmal Eye. And like I said last time we heard a teaser, I mentioned that, you know, it sounds like a very mature Meshuggah. In my opinion, nothing spectacular or innovative or innovative. Innovative? Innovative. Innovative. With this song, but it's still a kick ass song in the vein of Sugar. And Meshuggah announced that they would release their new album. What was the album uh, it called? Uh, the, uh, I don't, yeah, so Meshuggah will release their new album, Immutable, April 1st. So, two different approaches when it comes to releasing an album right here. We saw Arch Enemy that released their first single October last year, uh, and then announcing an album in July 29th. So, very long span of a pre-order right there. Or you do like Meshuggah, you release a single in late January, announcing that you're releasing the album April 1st. Much more shorter span of time right there. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure which approach is the better one nowadays. I, I don't know. I, maybe it depends on the type of band. And uh, I don't know. The single is amazing, by the way. Did you listen? It was right there. All right, we need to check out what Fender is releasing for 2022. And I've been eyeballing this a little bit, this page. There's a bunch of uh, Jaguars right here. Check it out. Jazz Master with gold. Hang on to your tits. Look at this. <laughs> Not this. Look at this. Where is it? This! Hello? Please, show me. Look at this, Squire. This looks f***ing insane. Look at that. Look at that. I think that's a sick finish right there. That's a really nice little uh, Squirey McSquire face right there. 40th anniversary. Stay in the know. Be first to hear about uh, New Gear Special Offers. No, thank you. How do I... No! Thank you. 40th anniversary Telecaster Gold Edition. Has it been 40 years? 40 years since what? 1980? 1982. Okay, okay. Okay, so the first instruments to bear the Squire name were introduced in 1982. Oh, so it's the 40th year anniversary of a Squire. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I just thought it would... I, I just thought it was looking sick. I mean, look at this. Very classy. Uh, am I getting older? By liking this? I don't think so. But that was the one that caught my eye right there. But th this is cool. Can we go... I mean... Ultra Lux Jaguar. 60th anniversary. Hello! Uh, that's kind of cool. Hello! Contemporary Active Jazz Master. Oof. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. JV Modified 50 Stratocaster with a humbucker. Hello! That looks cool. Advanced electronics. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe in advanced electronics. Uh, let's see. That was it. Okay. I mean, these Jaguars and Jazzmasters, really nice. You know, Fender, Fender, Squire. But I'm excited about this Squire Telecaster right here. It's uh, two colors. Okay, two colors. What? Look at that. That's pretty sick, actually. Well done, Fender. Fuck. We're heading over to the next piece of news right now. The next piece of news is that Texas Best Home Buyers presents the Vinnie Paul House. Okay, so the Vinnie Paul House, you know, Pantera drummer, one of my favorite drummers of all time, uh, passed away a couple of years back. They're selling his house now. 750,000 US dollars, which I don't know if that's a good price or not, but it is in Arlington, Texas. I mean, you can have a chance to live in a legend's house. Man, let's check out the video real quick. Can I watch it on YouTube? Yes. All right. Look at yeah, that looks weird. Are we gonna see the Crown Royal uh, pool? Is that in this house? I remember that he had a pool in the shape of a uh, Crown Royal ball or something. Maybe it's not this house. There's supposed to be a secret room somewhere. I want to see the secret room. Oh shit. Oh, the secret room! Was that a... Is that a glory hole? Okay, I wonder what he had in the uh, the secret room right there. Okay, so this is not the Crown Royale pool right there. Look at this. 
What a view. Vintage pictures of Vinnie Paul's house. Look at this. Oh, shit. Oh, look at that chandelier right there. Holy shit, that's cool. It's a, it's a couple of drums and drumsticks. That's really cool, actually. Damn, man. Largest known signed memorabilia of Vinnie Paul, his house. So, it's signed by Vinnie Paul. This house is basically signed by Vinnie Paul. 1995, the year when the house was built. Uh, holy shit, man. Wouldn't it be cool if we, like, as fans, went together, like, a thousand fans went together and just bought this house? How much is that? <laughs> I, okay, Ola, the math, math teacher. Uh, it will be $750 a head, right? Anyways, it's up for sale. You can own a piece of Vinnie Paul history right there. I heard somewhere that, you know, he actually moved out of Arlington because whenever he was walking around, people would just come up and say like, you know, uh, I'm sorry to hear about your brother. And, you know, everyone kind of reminding him of the tragedy. So he, he just moved to Vegas because he, he didn't get the same treatment there. I mean, obviously in Arlington, he's a, he's a hero and both guys were a hero. So imagine just getting reminded every day by random people that uh, your brother passed away. Uh, dude, that must be tough. So completely understandable why you would move to another place because of that. So there you go. You can buy a piece of history. Holy shit. Rest in peace, buddy. All right, next piece of news. 60 albums celebrating their 10th anniversary in 2022. Okay. Uh, we did a similar one uh, where a bunch of albums was released uh, 40 years ago. This is 10th anniversary. So we're, you know, a little bit... 2012? Okay. What happened 2012? Okay, A Life Once Lost. I think I listened to this album, or did I? And I must say, 10 years ago, maybe I wasn't as well-rounded with what was released. I mean, I, I'm more of a 90s guy. Uh, during the 90s and early 2000s, that's when I was a teenager hoarding albums. I was listening a shit ton to music and, you know, th that hunger and crave for new music. I had that, you know, second half of the 90s, first half of the 2000s. So just as a small little disclaimer, I might not be as well-rounded with these albums that were released in 2012, okay? A Life Once Lost, that's a cool band. I listened to some of their stuff. Abigail Williams, okay. Aborted. Global Flatline, okay. Acacia Strain. Uh, Alcest. Parallax 2, Between the Buried and Me, okay. All right, Cattle Decapitation Monolith of he in Humanity. This is a sick album, and I remember when this was released uh, because we actually toured with Cattle Decapitation uh, when I was at Six Feet Under. An absolutely incredible band, great guys as well. Uh, it just reminds me, I was listening to this album because we actually toured with them, and that's how I learned about Cattle Decapitation. And uh, I've been listening a little bit uh, to them since. Devin Townsend Project Epic Cloud. Okay, this is actually the first Devin Townsend that I properly, properly listened to. I mean, I listened to Teria and the stuff back in the early 2000s, but it, I, I was just so much into, like, brutal death metal at the time, so I didn't really listen that much to Devin. But Epic Cloud was one of the first albums where I felt, felt like, oh, you know, this is a really f***ing good album by Devin, and that made me listen to their earlier stuff. So that's cool to see. That's a 10 years old today, man. Holy shit. Same with this album, Dying Fetus, Reign Supreme. We toured with Six Feet Under, so I listened a lot to this album because of that. And I also, you know, obviously saw the tour where they played a fair majority of these songs live. <sighs> Holy shit. What a good band. Gojira Fant Savage. Excellent album. Holy shit. In Mourning. Holy shit. Can we talk about In Mourning? One of the most underrated bands ever. Not exactly sure how they sound today, but back in the day, they were like uh, another version of Opeth a little bit. They had a similar style to Opeth, but in their own way a little bit. If you haven't checked out In Morning, go do so. They're amazing. Meshuggah Coloss, holy shit, yes. That's such a sick album right there. I went to the listening party. This was, was at my first NAM back in 2012, and we there was a listening party at some club near Anaheim. And I think that there's a Metal Injection video somewhere from that listening party where they're interviewing, you know, celebrities in metal industry where everyone's like, you know, wishing them luck, uh, wishing the sugar luck and, you know, uh, and all that. W while I'm like, you know, you guys suck. Sarcasm, okay? You know, I'm friends with the guys. <laughs> I told on camera that Meshuga sucked, but uh, no one got it. They're just saying, excellent album, Meshuga Colossus. Has it been like, 10 years? Periphery 2! This time it's personal. Shit, is that 10 years old? This is the best Periphery album, in my opinion. Just saying. Six Feet Under, I'm dead. Oh shit, this is the... Is this the album I'm on? I think this is the album I'm on, right there. I think I have two or three songs on this album, not sure. Psylosis, <laughs> holy shit, Monolith. That's such a fucking banger of an album. Dark Roots of Earth. 
Oh shit. I hit my boss just a slight bit right there. It hurt. Oh shit. Winter Sun Time 1 is from 2012. Holy shit. The time flies, man. Holy shit. So there you go. A couple of albums from uh, 2012. It's been 10 years, guys. Holy shit. Next piece of news is that Marilyn Manson and Kanye West is working on a new album together. I don't know if this is good news or bad news, really. And is he still named Kanye West? I thought it was like Ye or something like that right now. That this guy is called Ye. Now. They're working on something together. Uh, good luck. Okay, I want to shout out to a really, really cool video from this guy called Yim Lil that has an insane video. Uh, about Tonewood. And Tonewood is the best discussion anyone can have on YouTube and on the internet. It's just... Gotta love it. Everyone just agrees with each other all the time. <laughs> no, but basically what he's doing, he's uh, comparing a couple of different guitars and builds and After he builds that, the guitars and just see if there's, text, you know, a tonal difference to amplified. Okay, amplified difference between two uh, guitars that have the same specs. And he goes really, really far in this experiment, even to the point where he's now. just building a fing air guitar using the same parts well, that as his bench. part caster that he's, uh, uh, you know, you know making the, the comparison with. with. And it's just a really jack. interesting video. Cable. Check this out. That's the guitar. That's the air guitar. <laughs> That's just so f***ing cool right there. There is basically no difference whatsoever. He basically bolted the bridge to his workbench as you know, measured the scale and all. It's just really interesting. It says a lot about the, the Tonewood discussion right there. A very much recommended video right there. I'm gonna link it up here, okay? And then I have to show you another video from a guy called Guitar Guts. He has a series called Trash to Frash, where he uh, refinishes and fixes up guitars. And he did one for a Washburn Solar V. Look at this. He has this. a signature model for Ola England before he started Solar Guitars. He has multiple models. Yes. And he says they're really guitars for everybody. They're not signature guitars for him. Mm -hmm. And they're made to be like more modern, sleek. This Washburn Solar is basically... This guy is f***ing right, right there. That's exactly the what I wanted. So he takes this Washburn Solar and he does something while, really f***ing cool. He makes a crackle finish out of it. So Check it out, guys. Check it out. Here it is. Satin crackle. Look at this. So he basically removed the pocket for the neck pickup. He removed the pot and he made this crackle finish. Look at that. That's sick as f right there. I just want to shout out to this guy because I think he did a really cool and awesome job with this guitar. I'll also put his video up here so you can, guys can go and check the whole process. It's really f***ing cool. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna find out how Australians play guitar. Look at this. You know, because they're upside down. I feel genuinely sorry for these guys. Okay, so I guess this guy has a bunch of different videos. Uh, when you play guitar in cursive. What's this? That's a really cool riff, actually. But why is this? Uh, why? Why would this be cursive? All right. If you had no idea how Australians play guitar, it's uh, like this, like this, uh, like that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That was it for Sunday with Ola. Remember tomorrow the live stream. It's a lot of fun, you guys. Go check it out on the second channel. I'm gonna uh, prepare a link up there. You can go and uh, remind yourself about the live stream tomorrow. It's gonna be a lot of fun, guys. Good luck with the contenders thing. Make some sick ass riffs. And I'll see you guys in the next Sunday with Ola or next video. To no, tomorrow. Tomorrow in the live stream, right?